How's everyone doing today? Are you ready for a really uninformative panel? <laughs> well, um, obviously, I'm some sort of Evie Oddly. And this is actually my creative partner, Morgan Taylor. Almost everything you saw on the show or in real life is helped or made by Morgan or facilitated, so... He's like, he's like the bronze behind my brain. <laughs> I'm just gonna briefly talk about what we're all here for aside from just taking really blurry photos of my glitter face. <laughs> Basically, when I was thinking about what I could do to put out, put out some more uh, videos in the world and, and make something for WOW, I was thinking about how many people ask me how I make my looks and where these crazy, crazy ideas come from. And so I, I think this is the best way I could think of to help give you some insights on what we do, how a creative process works, and how you can actually challenge yourself to think a little more creatively and push yourself outside of your boundaries in your day-to-day -day life, in your sex life or just in drag, I guess. <laughs> Basically, we are going to talk a little bit about at least my favorite looks from the show. Did you guys have any favorite looks? Did you? You guys are like, I didn't even like your drag. <laughs> Brooklyn was robbed. <laughs> it's true, she was robbed. Fight for her. It's too late now, though. Um. <laughs> Is that it? I can't take the crown back. I already drove it down the runway. Um, yeah, no, so I, I want to talk about some of the looks from the show that we actually got to put some serious work into. And as some of you uh, might have heard, I am not the richest queen, or at least I wasn't. Now I'm just filthy rich. <laughs> Disgustingly so. I go home to my mansion every night. <laughs> But I want to talk about some of the looks that we made that are really gritty because I think one of the craziest things about Drag Race blowing up the way it has is that it has, A, introduced the world to drag, which is fantastic, but it's also put this perspective on drag that we're always trying to one-up each other and we're always like, it's always a competition and a lot of what that competition has become about is how sparkly are you? How much money did you spend on those stones? And how many fancy designer friends did you have before you made it on Drag Race? Luckily for the world, I had next to none of that. And so uh, here's, I guess, just a little, a little insight. I think let's start with, okay, well, what are, what are some favorite looks from the show? Let's start, jellyfish. That'll be in there. The witch, please. Oh, I feel bad about the witch. That's one of the few things I didn't make. I just stole that from Nina Flowers. Yeah, when uh, we went to Nina Flowers' house for Puerto Rican lasagna, and she just said, she opened up her massive drag closet and just said, take whatever you want. Like, I have a bunch of pictures of, like, Evie trying on all these outfits. Which is really sad, because I actually didn't use anything except yeah. for, like, that and the entrance. But... I was so upset because... Evie, she has Evie nice drag. She to just like take Nina's drag and wear that instead of her drag, but she uh, decided she wanted to personalize every single outfit on the show and really represent herself, even though it was definitely not the easiest way to go about it. That's for f***ing sure. We could have just worn Nina's drag this whole time. Well, I guess, I guess let's get this show on the road. Oh, also, also, if you have any cues... Um, we're, instead of doing like a long question and answer at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about each outfit. So as they come up, if you have any questions about it or even another outfit and you want to be that bitch who's super like random and not on topic, feel free to, uh, come ask a question. We'll take a few after each outfit and hopefully inspire some creativity around, I was going to say around the world, but at least around the room. <laughs> <laughs> Can we play the first runway of the first mystery Evie Oddly outfit? Oh, okay. And sequin on the runway, Evie Oddly.
Oh, now I remember why this one's first. You guys, I should have written this all down on my hand, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to I wanna take you through kind of the creative journey where we start uh, when we come up with like a crazy concept because there are a few different ways that as a cheap, crafty, hot glue gun queen, you can make something yours or you can make something. And the first way you can do it is demonstrated by my sequin outfit because I actually bought it. I bought this outfit. I bought it at a, at a thrift store. But it naturally did not look like that when I got it. It didn't. It was it was a full-on surfer suit. So I bought it and took it home and fell in love with it. And then I tried it on and realized it did not fit me even a little bit. And in moments like this, you can either be really disappointed in yourself and tell yourself that you need to like make smarter decisions, not shop while you're drunk. Or you can learn how to alter something. My favorite, my favorite thing is going into a store and just buying something and having people be like, well, what if it doesn't fit you? You can make things fit. Because this was, I think, like an extra small. And I'm not an extra small lady. So for starters, what we did was we, we found this really cool uh, jumpsuit that basically looked like this. And anywhere it just wasn't fitting on my body, I just took a pair of scissors and you cut shapes out that's why i had weird ass <laughs> multiple that's where those shoulder flaps came from and and you can just find ways in literally everyday clothing like that's where i got started is finding that nothing fit my really long legs and just like snipping them like specifically like with pants and stuff if you cut lots of lines in them the fabric will all start to sag down you've got longer pants you can do it like vertically and you've got wider things. You just cut, you cut things away to make more. And because this was a sequins runway and when I bought this, it was made out of surfer fabric. We just took the really cool graffiti pattern that was already underneath and we wanted to preserve it. So we painstakingly <laughs> cut oh, out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Actually. Oh yeah. We like painstakingly just traced all of the shapes out of cheap sequin fabric that I, I had stolen from probably like a community center or something or like an old folks home. I don't know where I got it. It smelled bad, so it fit right at home with me. But, but we just cut out all of these shapes and started making our own new designs on top of it. And that's, that's my first favorite way to start making an outfit is to take something that already exists, something that you love, and just literally glue sh on top of it. And I don't, I think sewing is a really helpful skill that I learned after the show. Because <laughs> it helps you actually construct outfits. But if you don't have the time or energy or patience for that, there's literally so many sh shortcuts you can take with hot glue, safety pins, and just make it work. So that's kind of how we, uh, that's how we piece together the first runway, even though this is a runway that the judges hated. I still loved it. It's iconic. You can't mess with that. And I believe that drag is the evolutionary art form. And if you're like a working drag queen or just anyone who dresses up a lot, part of the game and part of the art form is being ever changing. And that's something that I respect and admire so much about Evie specifically. She is constantly mindful of evolving her own self, her style, her clothes, my clothes that she steals from my room. It's true. <laughs> I'm My wearing outfits. I'm wearing his underwear right now. I think, you know, a lot of times when we talk about drag on a budget, it doesn't even mean, you know, going to the trash can or going to a cheaper store. It means looking at what you already have. Looking at what's around you. As an element to transform and, you know, either make it more glamorous or deconstruct it and or just wear it, style it differently. But that's that's a big, important, you know, Part of being a drag queen is being able to take what you already have, what you've already worn, and then change it around. Like me with this bodysuit that I've owned for like three years that I just was like, oh, sequins? Let's just slap sequins on it. There's a runway. I'll, another another different runway that we did kind of the similar thing with is the dinosaur runway, which was... It was the same concept. We wanted to make a silly, stupid... Halloween costume, and so we ordered uh, just like literally a children's Halloween costume. It cost me $10, and then we just stoned it, cut out like the arms, 
so that my little claws could stick through, cut out the legs, because clearly they're not fitting. <laughs> and even though it wasn't necessarily the most polished or pretty thing, I think ultimately it made me happy because it made a statement and it made, well, it made RuPaul remember me that week. She knew my name. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like with just looking at what you have around you, even if it doesn't fit you right now even if it doesn't look like it fits your challenge you can always just force yourself to think about something a little more out of the box that's like my closing segment on that one on on this outfit she's pretty straightforward are there any like burning questions about how to cut it and glue it onto something <laughs> no you're smart you're smart and don't want your time wasted do you guys want to know some fun stuff about specifically this outfit uh... Just, this has nothing to do with crafting or being cre Actually, it does. <laughs> it's about adaptation. Because for this runway, I had a gigantic, long uh, sequin coat that I was going to wear over this. It was and the one that she wore for World Pride in New York City, if you saw a picture. If you, if you saw it, cool. <laughs> but I had a long sequin coat that I was going to wear over this and of course the wig that the judges hated and my plan was because I knew I did poor it was Snatch Game it was Snatch Game and I did Whoopi Goldberg so badly so badly but uh, I, knew, I knew I was going to be in the bottom so my original plan was get this to come out on the runway in my giant like sequin coat and that hair and do a little disco spin and reveal to the underwig and the under outfit. But guess who walked right before me? <laughs> that shady bitch. <laughs> that shady, shady bitch. You know how much room that cape took up in one of her only five suitcases that, that was, she could take. That was everything. But in, in any case, I got the challenge to um, either repeat the exact same thing Brooklyn did and make it look way worse or force myself to adapt. So I dropped the coat and I saved my wig reveal that the judges love hated for when it actually counts in life. So when life throws you a curveball, you throw it right back. <laughs> All right, let's let's let's, uh, let's go to the next outfit. I believe next is our clown. Yeah. <laughs> so this outfit was actually this comes from your past. Yeah, baby. Because you used to be a rodeo clown, right? Comedic entertainer. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We live together. So this outfit, I want to talk about. This specifically because this is a hybrid between buying something as it is and adding on top of it or taking away from it and constructing something on your own to, to make an idea. So when we got the orange challenge, I just knew that I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do for it. And when he said he wanted to make a clown, we did a lot of research and kind of thought about all the different things that clowns represent, where they come from, how you can like make that a visual impact. And we decided to try and make a big top skirt, like like a, a big top tent. And that turned out to be a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But we were able to accomplish this by using some items that we already had, like a corset, which we painted the right colors so that I wouldn't get red for not wearing orange on an orange runway. And then actually taking a hula hoop. Yeah, it's a hula hoop. It's fun. Can you see it under there? Can you see her little bits? Everyone has a hula hoop. And by that, I mean, if you don't, your neighbor does, and you just steal it right out of their yard. <laughs> we just traced out this like giant circle and we had to play a few times with um, trying to like sew this crazy ass fabric and drape it in a way that would look like a tent. And it was just a constant process of resizing things and like taking this cool elastic band I stole out of my old underwear. And like, this is probably one of the only outfits we sewed on. But like sewing that elastic band into this random circular fabric and if it didn't fit, we just pinned it together and painted over it because not everything is about perfection. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, if you want to see a tutorial of how to make this outfit way better than we did, somebody from like the Philippines uploaded a YouTube DIY tutorial so you can check his out. Yeah, it's way better. Go follow them. <laughs> Go to their panel. They know what they're doing. <laughs> so Evie and I used to be club managers at a big uh, nightclub in uh, Denver, Trax Denver. And we would throw all these really big theme parties. And Evie had a big resident show called The Odd Hour with really like immersive experience. Weird. And everything. It was so weird, you guys. She's so weird. And uh, part of like the fun of costume designing and drag for me is creating characters because... I mean, it might look like I'm really good at being social, but I really like shut down like in a club environment, and it's like hard for me to like just go up to people like and talk to them because then they're always like, "Ew." <laughs> but <laughs> if I come in sort of like with a character in a costume, it's like a icebreaker for me. And so that's one of the fun things about drag is you can you exactly. can express yourself through these different characters. Like I have I have a strong idea of who every character is whenever I'm dressing up in drag. Except for today. I don't know what this lady is. I don't know her story. <laughs> we'll find out through the day. <laughs> but it, it kind of helps you not only break the ice, but learn how to relate to different people and different experiences. That's why I like to try and do a whole bunch of different types of characters. Yeah. Like, whether they're clowns, whether they're glamorous, three-eyed aliens. It really just helps you learn how to relate to other people because you get into the zone of, I am this person, I am this fantasy, and this is how they would interact. And it really just breaks down the ice. I remember my first experience with this was in high school, where one week, like... I just decided to try wearing all black and then suddenly for no reason, this whole group of kids, I think they were called emos still then, they went through a shift. It was like emo scene, a million other things. But I, the, suddenly a whole group of kids was able to relate to me because I was giving them something to relate to. So the more you're willing to open up your human experience and well, experiment, the more you'll learn about what it means to be somebody else in someone else's shoes and how to just like make it look fabulous. Are there any cues about this outfit? Cause that was some vague, vague stuff. What was the headpiece made out of? Oh, I completely <laughs> forgot the headpiece. You mean my hair? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to look like I carved out an orange and just like had, had the rind chilling there. So. You know how like at like Walmart, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, like whatever your craft store of choice is, the dollar store, they always have that gardening section with weird like foam things. That's a weird foam thing that I like. I, I don't own like a foam cutter. I don't own anything that nice, but I do have one butcher knife that I use. <laughs> and what you do is you look really sketchy and you heat it up on your stove. <laughs> And then you quickly run outside with a butcher knife because burning plastic is toxic and you just slice whatever and it'll go through anything. It'll cut through foam, it'll cut through other foam, it'll cut, it'll cut through bone. And then you hide that from everyone who thinks you're a psychopath. <laughs> and then we stuck a popsicle stick in it and called it a day. It was, she was a cute little ditty. We, we didn't have a lot of time. No. We were painting it, and we didn't even have time to wait for it to dry while we were stoning it. So the stones were like dripping, dripping down. down it. Intentionally, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it was totally our on purpose. Character is like a messy clown. He's like chaotic, you know, like the Joker. Well, that's why I act, actually that is a little bit of why I decided to embrace chaos a lot is I make lots of mistakes. I'm only human, just like we all are, and I've met I've met so many queens in in my very short eight year career. I know it doesn't look like I'm that old, but I am. <laughs> no, I've I've met so many queens who will get discouraged because they like smeared their eyeliner or they left their contacts at home, and you feel out of your element. But if you learn how to work with the things life is throwing at you, then you're going to be able to own it, anyways. Like today, um, I couldn't get any of my glitter to stick on me. That's the end of the story. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready for our last look that we're gonna talk about today.
So I actually have to give uh, credit where credit is due. I got the idea of making this outfit, which I've always known I wanted to be on Drag Race. Like, this is the third time I pulled it was on Drag Race. And I always knew I wanted to make it ever since I saw one of our set designers at the nightclub we used to work at hang umbrellas from the ceiling with these weird jellyfish things on them. And I was like, oh, that's drag. So the first time I did it, I actually just stole one of hers. Thank you, Chrisanna. Thank you, Chrisanna. Thank you for teaching me how to do this. And thank you for letting me uh, steal your hard work. But I, I just stole one of hers and like painted a face on it and got chewed out at work the next week. But for this jellyfish specifically, it's really fun and cool because this is an outfit that is literally 100% made out of garbage. Like, it's just trash bags. It's trash bags and paint. And it is the last way that I typically approach, like, actually making things is making it from scratch, working with a crazy material, and trying to figure out how it moves and how it, how it works on its own. And so we could... Talk about how I um, made the jellyfish, or we can show you really quickly. I still had like a team of 30 people helping me on this. I was like, oh, hey, are you doing anything today? Want to come cut up some trash bags? Cool, thanks. Sounds good. Voila, trash bag. And it really does work better with friends. Everything does in crafting. Do you see how those lines are too? So what I did to make it look jellyful is... Ah. And if you repeat that process for like a week and a half, you'll have enough to cover your crotch. <laughs> so it's just looking at things, looking at really interesting materials and learning how to manipulate them for a way that works for you. So, oh, do we have some questions? What about you, Ducky? Now that you're super busy, do you still find time to craft and like make your outfits? Or is it... No, I miss you. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a little difficult. I definitely don't have time to make all of my own outfits anymore. However, I do work with a lovely team of creatives back home who were there for the process in the first place, who know how bitchy I get and who know uh, like how I like to experiment with things. And so while I only get to hop in every now and then on an outfit, we're still always in communication, always making new stuff. I did, I did actually get to help a lot with all of my drag con outfits, including the ones you don't get to see from today because I'm not wearing it we anymore. We represent a uh, queer collective of different artists in Denver. And we are so used to always crafting these looks all together and having so much fun doing it. And lately, Evie's been very, very, very busy touring and slaying the world. On tour, it's been a lot of about about the performance, but coming to DragCon and now the Work the World tour, there's a big revival of that Evie Oddly fashion. And she did like head design and craft a lot of it. Uh, well, most of it. So every every you now came in and, and then, fixed, like all of the mistakes. Yeah, that's the thing is, I got home recently and saw the outfits that we had planned, and I was like, no, this needs to be changed. This here, that there. So I I have time to do that much. I have time to bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I believe we actually now have a little clip of Evie's Odd School to play, and I haven't seen absolutely any of it myself. And I guess uh, here I present to you a little bit of Evie's Odd School. <laughs> Available on WoW Presents Plus soon-ish, I think.
<laughs> no close ups. <laughs> Today we are here to learn a little bit how to do drag good. <laughs> Today we're just here to expand your horizons, open your mind, and get a little bit creative. This is Evie's Odd School. I'm gonna show you how I made some of my favorite little knickknacks and my little tricks of the trade. And we're also here to just find out who am I? <laughs> Even if you win $100,000 in a crown, there's always something you can be doing to push yourself creatively. So I'm here to discover what I can now do at this next level. Unlike regular school, I won't make you fall asleep and I won't fail you just because you masturbate in the back of the classroom. <laughs> Oh, there's a date too. I'm really excited. I hope it's actually uh, informational. I hope I wasn't too stoned that day. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my panel.